talked about looking at your results in, in Hyperview. So here is a, a finished model. It runs. I've got uh, some different load cases, actually three different load cases. And it seems somewhat reasonable. So let's look at the results in Hyperview. So you, you can load it up and, and explicitly um, open up the the results file, but the easiest way to do what I usually do is just under analysis, uh, go under Opdestruct, and there's Hyperview right there. That'll load up the results for that model into Hyperview. We'll get some error message. I never know what this means. So I just close that out. But <clears throat> okay, so here's the model. And basically, the way you work through this is uh, mostly through these menu panels down here. That's what I use most of. Although I'm sure it works up here too, but for some reason, I tend to use these. It gets most of what I need to get done. On the left side here, you know, you can toggle off components if you want to. Maybe it'll help make things go a little clearer. Um, and also, you can look at the results for the different load cases. So for example, that's the load on the third load case I have is the, the load on the rear spar and the second one's on the front spar, okay? All right, uh, the first bunch of buttons kind of control how the elements should look. So you could make it wireframe or you could make it transparent with features hidden. I've never done that. I don't know what that look, looks kind of cool. Uh, but usually you just do shaded with the elements and so it is, that's the way you go, right? <clears throat> but you can fool around with these other ones for whatever it's worth. I guess that's what it was important in. I have no idea what these do. That's what it is. Okay. Um, the next group of uh, icons is probably the most important one. This first one, you know, controls what's being displayed, okay? So, once you click that one, you get a bunch of sub panels here, and you know that's the way it goes. So you can pick what type of results you want to look at: displacements, element forces, element moments, moments, reaction forces and moments, the element forces and moments for 2D elements, strains for 2 and 3D elements, stresses for 2 and 3D elements and strains and stresses for 1D elements, okay? If you don't see all those, it might have to do with what you output in the load cases, okay? So let's look at element stresses for 2D elements. Most of what we have here are 2D elements, so we'll do element stresses for 2D elements, okay? Now, when you look at element stresses, there's, again, lots of other things that you can look at. The von Mises stress, uh, the three principal stresses, P1, P2, and P3, those are from, you know, the major ones. And then you get the in-plane principal stresses. Now, that's in-plane, so there's just two of them. The maximum shear. You can get the hydrostatic pressure. You can also get the um, components of the stress tensor, all right? So let's just start a little look at von Mises, and then we do apply, and there it shows it for the whole model. You can do some sort of nodal averaging, and it smooths it out, but I actually always prefer to look at no averaging, um, and that's the way it goes, all right? Um, you can also, for since there's shell elements being applied here. For example, let, let's say we wanted to look at the principal values, like the first principal stress, okay? And there you go. Now, you can either look for the maximum one. Well, okay, remember these are shell elements. So we can look at the mid-plane or the lower or the upper surfaces, okay? So if you want to pick mid-plane, this will show you the stresses at the mid-plane. 
Z1 will show it on the bottom surface, depending on what the normal is, and Z2 on the top surface, depending on what the normal is. Or if you want to just see the max one, it'll pick the max of those three, right? And that's the way it goes. All right. Now, when we're talking about doing strain gauges, we might be very concerned about the actual components. So let's say we wanted to get the normal stress in the x direction. So there we go. And we can look at it at the inner, the outer, or the mid surface. Okay. So let's do inner. Do apply the lower surface. That's what you get. All right. Uh, now, one thing to note is you have to be careful about what coordinate system it's resolving these stresses in. Remember, you can transform stresses and view them in multiple orientations, right? And if you don't remember that, that's basically more circle stuff. That's stuff you learned in mechanics and materials. Look under in your mechanics materials textbook and look up stress transformation, okay? But you can either resolve these in the element system. Each element has a coordinate system. Or you could do it in uh, the analysis system, which is, unless you have alternate coordinate systems, that's going to be the same as the global. Okay, and sometimes they'll change. All right, sometimes they'll change. Okay. Uh, so, let's say we're looking at the region right in here where the strain gauges are. Okay. So we can actually just mask certain elements. So this. This little icon here will let you mask certain elements. So we can pick elements by a window. Let's just pick that one little box. For some reason, you have to, it's shift in the mouse button to do this. I don't know why that is, but it's a little different than what we do in the other one. And then we got a region of elements selected. And we can add those elements. And now we can mask the elements. I always get this backwards. We want to mask the elements outside the window. Let's see if I did that right. Mask. OK, mask selected. OK, I don't want to mask the selected. I want to mask the unselected one. So I think if I do reverse, I always get the throw in. Mask and select. Let's pick them again. All right, by window. We add them. Okay, now it's selected the other ones. That's what that meant to do. Okay. Now I can do mask selected. And those go away. And now all I'm left with are the, the ones that are in that panel. Okay? Actually, I probably could even turn off those ribs. But so be it, whatever, that's, that's, that's what we got, okay? All right. Um, each element, like I said, if we were interested in the stresses in these directions, uh, that would be the normal stress in the y direction. So we would look at y, y, and we would put it into the global system, and then we could apply, and that would show us the normal stresses in the y direction. We can do the same, and we can also then pick that at Z1 or Z2. Now, the one thing you might want to ask yourself is, which is Z1 and which is Z2? Is Z1, like say we're talking about this top set, is Z1 on here or is Z1 down here? Well, it has to do with the element numbering. And you didn't really control that directly, so sometimes it's going to be a little hard to see. But when you... When an element is created, it, each element has its own coordinate system. And that will define whether um, the normal direction is up or down, as drawn here. So in the up direction, that's where Z2 is, and down is Z1. So how do you see that? Well, there is an icon here that allows you to see the element coordinate systems, I believe. Is it this one? No. It, oh, here we go. System, right? You click this button, and you can show the elemental coordinate systems. We can 
pick the displayed ones and plot. And now if you look, it'll even show you the Z's. Okay, let's plot again. Okay, plot. And now if I zoom in here, I think you will see. Okay, so for example, this is for this element this is the y direction this is the x direction and so that means that the z direction is going down below so if you were actually to kind of see if we can even see it if you look inside this hole let's see if we can see we should see a lot of blue arrows going down and there they are you can see for all these elements the outward normal vector is pointing down. So that means for those elements, like for example this element here on its top surface, the Z1 is on the outside and Z2 is on the inside of the wing. Okay? So for all these elements here, Z1 is going to be on the top surface and Z2 is on the inner surface. So if that's where the strain gauges are, we should probably be looking at Z2. Okay? And we can apply the stresses on Z2, and in fact, I can even turn off these coordinate systems if you want to. We can turn them off. I think. Let's do this. Right. Clear? Clear? Yeah, there you go. Okay. All right. Okay, so that means that from looking at this, we know that the surface of interest is, in fact, Z2, and we can look at the normal stress in the Y direction. That's in the global coordinate system. We can do the normal stress in the x direction. And you can also do the shear, right? Now these, they're a little tricky because they're, I have to be projected somewhat, but this is, this is almost close to a plane, so it's not too bad, okay? Um, we'll ignore that phone. So, what else did I want to talk about in this video? Um, right, so that's how we get the stress components. You can also plot the strains. That goes the same way. Okay. Um, if you wanted to get actual values, we can pick this little icon here. Not that one. This, this icon here, which looks like a little bit of a spreadsheet. You can then like query particular elements. So, we can pick the element ID, element configure element. And you can pick the contour data, right? And so let's say we pick an element here. You can see it actually gives you that stuff in, uh, you know, in a table format. And you can pick several elements, and it'll give you all that information. Okay? I believe you can also export that down here to a spreadsheet. Okay. Um, what else do we need to talk about? Okay. You you might need to also look at. Um, the one-dimensional elements. So let's let's turn all these off. So let's say you're interested in some of the stresses in the rivets. That would go the same way. But you would go under this window and you would pick a 1D stresses. And then you would change this to, you know, say you wanted to see the axial stresses, C bar axial, and that would plot those. Probably need to turn off a couple of layers here just to see them. But you can see the stresses plotted on those guys. You can also do all the torsional stresses. They should be very small. The uh, stresses at stress recovery points, and so on and so forth. Okay, at point A, grid A, grid B, right? So this is stress recovery point A, point C, D, E, and F. And at the other end, B, at C, D, E, and F, those are the four stress recovery points for a C bar element. We've talked about that. You can do the min and the max, and it can show all those features, all right? Um, you can also look at the, the deformation, which actually is, can be quite useful. So let's just go back and plot some 2D stresses. And then if you go to 
Which icon is it? This icon. That allows you to uh, deform the model. Actually, it is deformed already, but it has a scaling of 1. So if you bump up that scaling, you can actually see the deformation a little more pronounced. Okay, So that's exaggerated quite a bit. But sometimes it's quite useful because it can give you an idea about how you know things are connected. So remember, these are amplified. So you shouldn't always get too concerned that, for example, this component penetrates out of here. But that's only because the deformation is uh, 20, 35 times what it should be. If I set that scale factor back to 1, you know, that's, that's the actual deformation. So it's hardly visible. But, you know. I think those are the major things you can look at. You can, I think you can animate it. It'll sort of show the wing flapping. You can slow the speed down. Make it look a little better. You can make it back and forth. You can uh, also plot data out. I won't get into that too much here, but a lot of times we want to look at data across lines. So you can use this window to generate plots. You can generate, you can make um, several windows and put different things in the each windows. You can, you can generate results and also put videos from experiments or, you know, okay. So there's a lot you can do with Hyperview. It's a really good program. And if you wanted to, oh, if you want to export the pictures up here, you got some icons. You can export a movie, or you can export a snapshot that allow you to like put it into a report. Okay. All right. I think that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about.